Okay, Paul, you're from the Gold Coast and you have the first ever Skeeter open boat in the country. I do. What, what did you buy? Well, I um, did a bit of research on the internet and I found the boat I had at the time wasn't sufficient for what I was fishing, you know, the style of fishing I was doing. And um, yeah, the Skeeter really caught my eye. And it's finished, it's layout. And um, I made inquiries through Josh from Skeeter Australia. And yep. it just went from there. So uh, you fell in love with this boat on the internet. Yes. And then you decided yep. to mail order one in, nearly. I did. It's a mail order bride. Ma ma mail order bride. Virgin boat. <laughs> um, and of course, Josh from Skeeter, he brings the boats in in a container and he puts them on a local trailer. Let's start from the trailer up. Yep. Um, you've got an easy tow galvanised trailer here. Yes. Launching and retrieving, no problems at all? No problems. Um, yeah, easy to launch. Um, Slip straight off, centres when you're coming back on, centres straight up. Um, There's a margin for error then if you come in at the wrong angle, it corrects you on it the corrects, way. It corrects very easily, yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the boat itself, um, it's the first ever tiller drive skeeter we've seen. Um, why do you like the tiller over a side console? I've had side consoles, I've had centre consoles, and I've had tillers. I find the tiller control is just more direct. You have more hands on for the style of fishing I do. I do casting, trolling in particular. And what species of fish do you target? Uh, flathead inshore, yep. um, barramundi up in uh, Awonga near Gladstone, um, and also go offshore chasing snapper. So this boat is very diverse. Paul, you've been a, uh, an avid Fishing Monthly subscriber for many years. Many years, um, yep. How do you feel about this idea of a boat tester talking to the owner of the boat rather than a dealer that's trying to sell the boat? I've, I, think it's, I think it's good because it gives the buyers out there an honest opinion of what a boat is actually like. So are you going to promise to tell us the full truth about this boat, everything you like and everything you don't exactly. like? Exactly, exactly. One of the things I notice about this boat is this, uh, is this fantastic big live well. Uh, what's the biggest fish you've had in that live well so far? Biggest fish would probably be about a 60 centimetre flathead. Yeah, and it holds yeah. a flathead in no problem? It holds a flathead. Actually, a flathead can actually turn around on in the that, inside in that, that. in that live well. I like you fish the, uh, the flathead tournaments a lot with the young fella Jay. Yes, yep. And uh, it's a bit of a shame, really, that you've got to put everything over 75 back because I reckon that could hold a metre long flathead in there. Oh, look, definitely. It would definitely hold a metre long flathead. Actually, even offshore, it would take a good, nice size mackerel in there. Yep, and this is all controlled with the Flowrite live well system? Full Flowrite live well aerator um, recirculates. There is another live well on the boat up the front here. It's more like a bait well than a live well. Yeah. Um, you, you find uh, you use that a lot or do you end up using it for storage? I haven't used that one a lot at the present time, um, mainly because I don't fish that much with bait. Yes. I'm pure lure. But if you're a, lure, if you're a live bait man, you could put uh, 10 yakas in there and uh, fish the seaway all day. Yakas, um, live yabbies in a basket, drop it in, aerates through, keeps the abbeys alive beautifully. Tell us about how the, the motor's set up. You've got a 70 horsepower Suzuki on this boat. Uh, obviously you love the quiet four stroke. Yeah. I've been a Suzuki fan for a number of years. My last three boats have had Suzukis on them. Um, and look, look, four strokes are the way to go, I find, but everyone's individual choices. Yep. Um, this one's set up with a 70. The boat's rated to a maximum of 80 horsepower. Yes, and what propeller have you got on this one? This is running a Suzuki alloy prop, but it's 14 inch diameter, 17 inch pitch. And top speed you get out of this thing? Top speed's about 30, 31 mile an hour. Okay, so that's uh, very ample for getting around the broad Look, water. It's ample for the broad water. It's a big boat. It's a tiller steer boat. I don't know what it would be like trying to steer a tiller steer boat at 40 knots or more. Would you like to try? I'd like to have a go. <laughs> Okay, this boat, it's, it seems very dry when we're on the water. Um, do you like the dryness? It's, it is exceptionally dry. I mean, I know a lot of boat builders say, oh, it's the driest boat on the market, but this is the driest boat I've ever had. Paul, it's got a massive fuel tank, and this is something around 130 about, litres? About 130 litres. And yes. how much of that would you use on a day out with that motor? A day out with this motor, probably around the 30, 30 litre mark. And that's for the trip up to the pin? Trip up to the pin. Fishing all day? Fishing, trolling around. Um, doing some high speed runs if I want to. This thing's got a great rod box up the front. It holds rods up to what, six foot? Six foot, six foot six. And how many yeah. of them can you, you fit can in fit there? about six in that rod locker. I notice you've got a, uh, an autopilot style Minn Kota up the front. Do you find that quite essential for your fishing in this boat? It is. It, in um, this boat in particular, it's an 80 pounder. Because the boat is 5.3 metres long, it requires that 80 pound 
thrust mean coder, uh, but is very good, very directional. And no problems in the current stand of the pin? No, no problems at all. Tow this behind a, uh, uh, what's that, a Pajero? An old Pajero, yeah. An old Pajero, and it, it tows fine on the single axle trailer? It does. This um, trailer set up by Easy Tow um, tracks beautifully. It tracks in a straight line. You don't even know the boat's on the back. You could run, even though the weight of the boat is 560 kilos, just the hull weight, you could run without strakes. Another thing about an Australian-made trailer, I suppose, is you can get the spares. Um, yes. That must be uh, give you peace of mind when you're going barrow fishing. Oh, look, it does. Um, you can go into any auto parts shop and know that you're going to get a bearing or an outer seal, inner seal, whatever. This boat, this trailer's got duro hubs on it, um, which is an added extra that Easy Tow do. Um, I had the choice to have an American trailer, but I was steered away from that by Josh because there's just no warranty on them. Now, what don't you like about the boat? The, probably the only thing I say that, I, well I don't like it, but I'm not in favour of it, is carpet. I've never been a favour of carpet in a boat, but it is growing on me. Um, you know, it's just a bit harder to clean and wash, but my mates are very at me to get this boat blooded with some mackerel blood or something like that, which I haven't done yet and I'm a bit reluctant to. Uh, I look at this transom here, it seems quite low. Has that been an issue for you? Um, it was a concern because I've never seen or had a boat with such an open transom as that. But I have found since I've had it, it doesn't have any worries. It doesn't take water over the back. When you come off with speed, it pops up on the wash. It's got a step transom, so it, you get no water over it. You can even back down in some swell and it doesn't splash over. Now, we've got a small sounder box in the back here, but you said on your wish list is a bigger sounder. Where would yeah. you mount that? I'd like to get a nice big hum hummingbird unit and it would ideally mount probably off the starboard side here in front of me um, and probably transfer that one up to the bow as a bow mount sounder. Now I see you've got a couple of stainless steel rails here that you've mounted rod holders on. That's yeah. obviously for your uh, for your trolling. trolling. Trolling for flathead and obviously trolling for the barramundi up Awonga. Yeah, I do a bit of trolling so it's always good to have the rod holders there plus you can always take them out easily and still hand troll. Now I notice there's two rod lockers, one on each side of this boat. One yeah. of them is significantly larger than the other. It is, yep. Um, this one on the starboard side takes up to, it says it takes up to 12 foot fly rods. And the one on the port side will take up to 9 or 10 foot rods. Um, plus obviously the one in the centre of the cast deck taking the majority of your 6 foot, 6 foot 6 bait casters. Okay, your service from Josh at Skeeter Australia, how was it? Josh was really easy to deal with, um, no problems, he was there to help you whenever you needed the help. Um, he would let you know what stage the boat was at, coming out of the factory, coming onto the ship, arrival time in Australia, into his factory and when you could pick it up. Um, it was just yeah, no drama, no pressure to buy a boat either. And of course the Suzuki was fitted by Whitewater Marine. Whitewater Marine at Southport here on the Gulf Coast. They're the main Suzuki and BRP dealership. Yes. Um, like I said, I've always had Suzuki's. I bought my Suzuki's through them. Um, we get sponsored by them for the Flathead Classic. Um, and hence it's on your jersey, right here. On the jersey, Whitewater Marine. <laughs>